all right guys wes here welcome back to the channel and today we have some huge news for elden ring shadow of the Erd tree dlc we have finally got the trailer we got a release date we got our first look at real gameplay and since this is from software they gave us a ton of new gameplay to analyze while we wait for the now confirmed june 21st release date and in today's video we're going to talk about everything that you should know about shadow of the Erd tree including new gameplay details some brand new information from the man himself miyazaki and so much more guys we have a lot to talk about so check the video chapters for easy viewing and without further delay let's get into it so in the early hours of february 21st bandai namco released the first trailer for shadow of the earth tree giving us narration full of lore a ton of glamour shots of new locations on the map a ton of new gameplay footage showing off new weapons and enemies being added to the game new bosses and a ton of other stuff now before we get into the gameplay details let's first talk about the setting and the story for shadow of the earth tree now if we take a look at the official store page on the bandai namco website it also gives us a little insight on the plot of the expansion so in the description of the collector's edition it reads this the land of shadow a place obscured by the Erd tree where the goddess merica first set foot a land purge in an unsung battle set ablaze by mesmer's flame it was to this land that mikola departed divesting himself of his flesh his strength his lineage of all things golden and now mikola awaits the return of his promised lord now on that page there's also details about the game story that reads guided by empyrean mikola players are beckoned to the land of shadow a place obscured by by the Erd tree where the goddess merica first set foot in these strange new lands players discover the dark secrets of the world as they meet others who follow in mikola's footsteps with ulterior motives shadow of the Erd tree takes place beyond the lands between to explore the land of shadow a completely new world from elden ring players can seamlessly travel back and forth between its vast maps interspersed with diverse situations and meticulous dungeons where menacing enemies roam shadow of the Erd tree adds new weapons equipments weapon skills and magic not found in the base game of elden ring along with new enemies, boss encounters, and plot lines to further increase players' RPG freedom. Take on the threat with new powers you can acquire. Now, recently, Miyazaki was interviewed regarding Shadow of the Erd Tree, and we have some new details from those interviews that contain some really interesting information that I think a lot of you guys are going to want to know. Now, when asked the question regarding the setting and other story details about Shadow of the Erd Tree, Miyazaki responded with, first of all, the setting of Shadow of the Erd Tree is a brand new land. It's a brand new map separate from the lands between. It is a land that is overshadowed by the particular shadow shadow of the Erd tree as opposed to the Erd tree in the lands between and it takes place again in an entirely separate physically separated map so it will involve a warp of sorts to get there which we'll talk about that in just a minute in terms of the settings and themes it technically occupies the same space as the lands between the same universe but due to something story related we won't reveal that today this has become physically disconnected and you'll travel to the shadow of the Erd tree land as a separate place Miyazaki confirmed that Mikola is a key part of this story this time perhaps as guessed by many players who saw the art that was previously revealed that is in fact Mikola and it is he who traveled to the land of the shadow and it is he that the players will be traveling in his path and following in his footsteps another axis of the story is Queen Merica and what led Mikola to follow her there now when asked about the overall base game the size of the world as well as how this new DLC is structured Miyazaki said yes we think players can expect a similar experience to what they had in the base game the land of the shadow will be structured in a similar way as you said with open field maps large-scale legacy dungeons and with small to medium legacies as as well so we hope players will enjoy the same sense of scale and sense of adventure throughout that structure now when asked the question regarding the approximate size of the world compared to the world in the base game Miyazaki said it's hard to answer without giving away too much and to a high degree of accuracy but if you think in terms of scale and size it's probably compared to if not larger than the area of Limgrave from the base game Miyazaki was also asked about the bosses and enemies that were revealed in the trailer for instance like the giant basket and flaming kindling Miyazaki responded okay this is a giant basket of flame as you eloquently put mitchell was a terrible weapon you used in a war that occurred in the land of shadow so again without saying too much we can't give away the name just yet officially but yes it was a really gruesome weapon that was used and the kindling that you see is actually the remains of bodies that were put there to burn the interviewer then asked about the terrifying worm with arms that eat people whole to which miyazaki said it's hard to talk about some of these enemies without spoiling anything but there is quote a significant connection between these enemies the way they are and the land of shadow there was another question regarding George George R. R. Martin's involvement, to which Miyazaki responded, the way George R. R. Martin's story has been incorporated is the same way as it was with the base game and with Elden Ring. And to avoid misunderstanding there, we just want to point out that he hasn't written anything exclusively and new for the sake of this DLC. But it would still be fair to say that he and his mythos that he created for us are involved in the creation of Shadow of the Earth Tree in the same way. Now, the last question from this interview that I'm going to cover is the interviewer asked if this was the end of Elden Ring's story or is there room for either more DLC or Elden Ring 2 down the line? 
fine. Twitch Miyazaki said, we don't want to say that this is the end of the Elden Ring saga for now. And they're treating it like they did for the end of Dark Souls 3. We didn't want to flatten those possibilities or put a pin in them just at that time. And it's a similar story with Elden Ring. They don't have any current plans to make a second DLC or a sequel, but we definitely don't want to snuff out that possibility. And we think that there could well be something in the future. So now let's talk about the trailer itself. The trailer starts with a dramatic look at Mikola's hand, which actually confirms a theory that's been going around the internet since 2022. Many Elden Ring fans have theorized that Mikola's hand would be used as a transport into whatever DLC world from software was working on. And now that we've seen this trailer and heard it from Miyazaki himself, it is confirmed. There's been a bit of debate in the Elden Ring community over how the DLC is going to be integrated with the base game, because unlike other from software games, Elden Ring is a true open world, meaning there are several ways that the DLC would be slotted in. Some open world games use expansions as an opportunity to add a bunch of new locations to the base game's map and use a level cap or difficulty spike as a way to keep new players from ascending to the content too early in their playthrough. Other open world game expansions go the total opposite direction and have the DLC take place on a different map so that the player can experience it at their own pace. And now that we have that confirmation, we'll be using Mikola's hand to transport us to the Land of Shadow, which is our new location for the DLC. Now, the trailer gave us a good look at a ton of new environments, including our first really good look at the Shadow of the Earth Tree as it towers over the Land of Shadows. We see what appears to be a dark cathedral that's been ravaged by some kind of chaos, and there's a throne in the middle of the room. At 101, we see a creepy swamp castle that kind of reminds me of Blight Town from Dark Souls 1. Skip ahead to 105. We also get a look at a tall cave that our character is walking through with a torch, and there are a bunch of massive cauldrons hanging from the chains above. And of course, it would not be a FromSoft game without a massive lava filled area, which we get a look at as our character slowly ascends up a massive pipe, but it's unknown exactly where they're headed. But speaking of lava and fire, there's also a look at what I can only assume is going to be one of the boss fights as we see a huge humankind creature made of wood and vines, and most of it is on fire just for added intimidation. There's also a quick glimpse at a new enemy type, a long snake-like creature with Dementor style arms that puts the player character's entire head in their mouth, chews them up, and spits them out, presumably after taking about half of their health part away. There's also a look at one of the other boss fights, a giant monster with what looks like a huge lion-like creature as a mask, but humanoid teeth and a huge jumping range. And it also can breathe smoke. So I'm expecting this thing to kick our collective butts once we see it in action. And now we get to our first look at Mesmer the Impaler, who looks absolutely awesome. And it's exactly the kind of main box art villain a game like Elden Ring deserves. We also see a new enemy type with a big one-handed cleaver and pretty quick mobility, a character doing a giant area of effect magic attack, a one versus one fight between a fast melee focused character and a very tall enemy with a dual sided blade. There's also a character throwing a giant flaming boulder at a group of enemies. There's an armored enemy with a rapid fire flaming crossbow with a giant roaring bear head creature, an awesome 1v1 in a blue field between a player character and a creepy yet pretty graceful enemy holding two jagged swords. And then we've got a character holding a giant sword with purple lightning while holding what looks like an armored woolly mammoth. There's a boss fight with what looks like a hybrid of giant crocodile and giant hippo that eventually turns into a lightning powered porcupine, which like, come on, that's pretty awesome. And then a boss fight with a giant skeleton wielding a huge boomerang scythe, which also is pretty awesome. And then there's an enemy that's been impaled through the head with a sword, but still pulling it out of themselves. Like seriously, how does From Software come up with all this stuff? Absolutely wild. And the trailer ends with a quick look at the boss fight with Mesmer the Impaler, which looks ridiculously awesome and it will surely be a worthwhile conclusion to all of this new adventure that's in front of us the trailer concludes with a reveal of the june 21st release date the reveal of the ring of mikola gesture that you get for pre-ordering and also the confirmation that there's now going to be a shadow of the Erdtree edition of elden ring which is most likely just the base game plus the dlc for new elden ring players to pick up once the expansion comes out and then of course there is the collector's edition which looks insane i wasn't able to pre-order it yet but i'm looking forward to trying to snag that thing because holy crap did from soft absolutely cook the collector's edition is going to cost 250 dollars and it includes a download code for the dlc it's 46 centimeter statue with mesmer the impaler the bandai namco website also just started selling a collectible helmet based on mesmer the impaler which is going for 190 dollars and is surely going to be selling out pretty quickly so if you're trying to get this you better go ahead and pick it up now we also have confirmation on the pricing and pay attention because there are multiple editions currently up for pre-order there's the base version for 40 dollars which includes the expansion and nothing else there's the premium bundle for 50 dollars which includes the expansion a digital art book and the soundtrack and then there's a digital deluxe which is going for a hundred dollars
members and includes all of the digital content plus a physical copy of the art book and soundtrack and to top that all off if you pre-order any version of the game you'll get a bonus gesture well guys that's going to wrap it up with this video let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section are you excited for shadow of the earth tree do you plan on picking up the collector's edition let me know in the comment section hit the like button if you've enjoyed this coverage and until next time guys this has been wes and i will talk to you again soon